Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about the Russian ruble, because the value of the ruble has been falling dramatically. Over the course of the last six months, we've seen the value of the ruble fall by more than 35% against the US dollar, and it's actually fallen by 25% in the last three months. And this is a really interesting development because following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, we saw the value of the ruble fall significantly. However, it then bounced back dramatically. And a lot of commentators at that time were stating that this proved the strength of the Russian economy. Because the ruble was performing well in the international markets, everybody saw that as a sign of strength. So in today's video, I'll have a detailed look at what's been happening to the exchange rate between the Russian ruble and the US dollar. We'll talk about what's happening in the Russian economy and what's going on with regards to Russia's reserves, because historically Russia has been using its reserves to hold up the value of the ruble. We'll have a look at what's going on with regards to oil sales, because that's the biggest part of the Russian economy. And as you'll be aware, if you've been following the channel, there's been a big switch over the course of the last 12 months towards selling more oil into India and China. We'll then have a look at what's going on with regards to the exchange rate against the Chinese yuan and the Indian rupee. Because clearly, if Russia is doing more business with those countries, you would expect that the Russian ruble should be strengthening. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summaries to what I think is actually happening with regards to the Russian ruble and what the impact of the decline in the value is likely to be for the Russian economy. This chart shows the movement in the exchange rate between the US dollar and the Russian ruble over the course of the last 12 months. And before we get into the detail on this, I've got an interesting point with regards to the Russian ruble that I want to clear up. Because there are two different ways of spelling ruble. It can either be R-U-B-L-E, which is the American version, or R-O-U-B-L-E, which is the British version. And as with a lot of British words, we've got an extra vowel, we've got an additional O in there. And that's quite common if you think about different spellings for things like colour and valour and harbour, where an extra vowel has been inserted. So I just wanted to clear that up for all of the keyboard warriors who like to send me messages saying you don't know how to spell ruble. So if we now get back to this currency graph, the other thing to note here is that when you're looking at exchange rates, you generally quote the stronger currency first. So in this case, the US dollar is worth more than the Russian ruble. At the time of making this video, one US dollar equated to 81.6 Russian rubles. So you quote US dollar first. So what we can see from this graph is that six months ago, one US dollar was trading for around 60.7 Russian rubles. And the movement represents a deterioration in the value of the Russian ruble, equating to around 35%. And as I mentioned at the start of the video, the deterioration over the course of the last three months has actually represented a fall of around 25%. Because on the 13th of January, one US dollar was trading for around 65 Russian rubles. There was actually a minor recovery in the valuation of the ruble at the start of 2023. However, over the course of the last three months, we've seen that completely reversed. So obviously at face value, this looks like bad news for the Russian ruble. However, we need to put all of this into context. So let's expand the graph out to the five year position. And what this shows is that five years ago, one US dollar equated to around 61 Russian rubles. And that exchange rate remained relatively stable all the way through until around March 2020, when we saw the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic starting to hit all across the world. And as a result of the lockdowns that were brought in by many governments, we saw the demand for oil fall. Now, the success of the Russian economy and therefore the value of the Russian ruble is closely linked to what's happening with oil. And because we saw a fall in demand for oil as industry started to close down and people went into lockdown and therefore were not using their vehicles, we saw a drop in the demand for oil. We saw a fall in the price of oil. And as a result of that, we saw a deterioration in the value of the Russian ruble. And for the majority of 2020 and 2021, one US dollar equated to around 75 Russian rubles. And that was the situation that the Russian ruble found itself in prior to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The invasion of Ukraine commenced on the 24th of February 2022. And as you can see, the immediate impact on the Russian ruble was a huge deterioration in value. And at the start of March 2022, 
one US dollar was trading for 130 Russian rubles. Now, the reason for that dramatic fall was that immediately following the military invasion, the USA and the UK came out and stated that they no longer wanted to do any business with Russia. And there was a big question mark as to whether or not Russia was going to be able to keep selling its fuel products into the West. A raft of financial sanctions were immediately introduced against Russia and the impact of these sanctions was actually a huge contraction in the market value of the Russian ruble because most countries from the West no longer wanted to buy Russian rubles because they didn't want to be buying Russian fuel. And so as we saw the market contract, the Russian authorities were actually able to manipulate the price. Because it was a very small market, the Russian central bank was able to step in and make sure that the price stayed at an appropriate level. And as a direct result of that, we actually saw the value of the Russian ruble strengthen significantly. And by June 2022, one US dollar was trading for 50 Russian rubles, which was actually the strongest position that the Russian ruble had been in since 2014, which was actually when Russia invaded Crimea, which was previously part of Ukraine, and it became subject to a variety of other sanctions. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, a lot of commentators came out and were saying that this proved the strength of the Russian economy. The fact that the Russian ruble had reached its strongest position at any time in the previous eight years proved the resilience of the Russian economy and proved that Russia was going to be successful and that the West was going to fail in trying to apply all of the sanctions against Russia. Now, before we go on any further today, I want to talk to you about today's sponsor, Masterworks. The value of the Russian ruble has fallen significantly over the course of the last six months. And when any country experiences a fall in the value of its currency, it generally drives up inflation. And inflation continues to be the number one problem in most economies around the world. And the problem with inflation is that it's now impacting on investment returns. And 2022 saw the worst performance since 2008 for the stock market. And Goldman Sachs have recently stated that the market is heading nowhere in 2023. As a result of this, fund managers are now looking into low correlation assets because even if markets flatline this year, these assets can continue to climb. And according to a recent report by Citibank, of these assets, the one with the lowest correlation is art. Over the last 26 years, contemporary art pieces have provided a return more than double the S&P 500's return. Now, you may be thinking that art as an investment is only available to billionaires. However, Masterworks has come up with a creative structure that lets you invest in multi-million dollar paintings without breaking the bank. And since Masterworks started trading, they've built a track record of 11 exits, all of them profitable. So in view of these dynamics, it's no wonder that Masterworks has seen over 650,000 investors trying to gain access. And as a result of that, there is now a waitlist. Now, I want to make it very clear that I'm not providing investment advice. And before you make any investment, you need to do your own research. However, if you are interested in investing in Masterworks, then Joe Blogs viewers have exclusive VIP access to their latest offerings, which you can check out by clicking the link in the description below. If we now change the scale of the graph to the last 12 months, you can see that there has been a marked and consistent decline in the value of the ruble, and there have been a number of reasons for that. Firstly, the main reason for the strengthening in the value of the ruble was that the Russian central bank was supporting the currency. It was going into the open market and buying rubles to keep the price up. However, the central bank decided that it no longer wanted to pursue that strategy because it was too expensive and the central bank didn't want to keep dipping into the Russian reserves just to maintain the value of the ruble. The second reason that we've seen a decline in the value of the Russian ruble is that there's been less demand from the West to buy Russian oil and gas over that period. If you've been following the channel, you'll be perfectly aware that at the start of the war, the whole of Europe was continuing to buy gas because it didn't really have many other options. The only alternative to taking the gas from Russia, which was coming directly into a lot of countries via the pipelines that Russia had constructed over the last 20 years, was to use Use liquefied natural gas and the problem with switching to liquefied natural gas is that it takes time because you need to set up regasification facilities to convert the liquefied natural gas back into its natural gaseous form which you can then feed into your network so a lot of countries in europe in the summer of 2022 were working feverishly trying to get all of these facilities in place and during that period they continued to buy large volumes of russian gas and because president putin 
issued a decree at the end of March stating that all unfriendly nations had to make their payments for that gas in Russian rubles that kept up the demand for Russian rubles. However, during the second half of 2022, we saw a lot of European countries moving away from buying that Russian gas and taking on more LNG. And we also saw the explosions take place in the Nord Stream pipelines, which were the two pipelines that were supplying gas directly into Germany. We saw those explosions take place under the Baltic Sea, which then meant that there was no further transmission of any gas through those pipelines. So as we saw the decline in the purchase of gas, we saw a decline in demand for the Russian ruble and that led to a deterioration in the value because as with any market it's a supply and demand issue if demand is rising for something then generally the price will rise if demand is falling then the price will fall and as demand for the Russian ruble was falling that led to a deterioration in the value which you can see in this chart now, one of the biggest changes in the demand for Russian ruble was what was happening with oil. On the 5th of December, the European Union introduced an outright ban for all of its members on the purchase of Russian oil transported over the sea. And in addition to that, the G7 also introduced on the same day an oil price cap of $60 per barrel for the sale of all Russian oil. So these two measures had a double whammy impact on the demand for the Russian ruble. Firstly, European countries were no longer buying that oil, so therefore there was no demand. They didn't want any Russian rubles because they weren't buying any of the oil products. And secondly, the oil price cap reduced the amount that Russia was able to achieve for the sale of all of its oil and therefore reduced the value of the demand for Russian rubles. And if we look at the graph in a bit more detail, you can see the direct impact of that. On the 1st of December, one US dollar was trading for 61 Russian rubles. However, by the 30th of December, one US dollar was trading for 71 Russian rubles. So that represents a fall in the value of the ruble of more than 16% in one month. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there was actually a recovery in the value of the ruble at the start of January. And on the 13th of January, one US dollar was trading for around 65 Russian rubles. And the reasons for this is that the Russian central bank had stepped in to try to recover the value. They'd actually gone into the market and started buying Russian rubles to try to strengthen it. However, as with all forms of market manipulation, unless you're committed to continue buying in the open market, you can't keep the price at that level. And the Russian central bank obviously decided that they didn't want to continue with that policy. And as you can see, between January the 13th and where we are today, the value of the ruble has deteriorated significantly, more than 25%. Now, in addition to the outright ban that was introduced for crude oil on December the 5th, the European Union also brought in another ban on February the 5th on all refined products. So this relates to any products that have gone through the refinery process, such as gasoline, diesel, kerosene. And what this did was further reduce the demand for Russian oil products and therefore reduce the demand for Russian rubles. And you can see the direct impact of this. On the 1st of February, one US dollar was trading for 70 Russian rubles. However, where we are today, one US dollar is trading for more than 81.5 Russian rubles. So we're seeing the impact of these real world sanctions feeding through into the value of the Russian ruble because nobody wants any Russian products. Therefore, there is no demand for Russian rubles and therefore the value of the ruble has fallen significantly. The success of the Russian economy and the value of the Russian reserves are really important and have a direct relationship to what's happening with the Russian ruble. Immediately following the invasion of Ukraine, the Russian authorities took the decision that they wanted to support the value of the ruble in the international markets and therefore they were happy to use some of their reserves to go in and buy rubles to keep the value strong. However, in the summer of 2022, the Russian central bank decided that it no longer wanted to pursue that strategy and as a result of falling demand for oil and gas products, we saw a fall in the value of the ruble. Now, one of the reasons that Russia is currently struggling to support the value of the ruble is that the Russian economy is doing very badly. This press release from TASS, which is the official Russian news agency, states that the Russian budget deficit is expected to reach $29.42 billion in Q1 2023. 
The official statement reads, according to preliminary estimates, the volume of federal budget revenues in January to March 2023 amounted to 5.677 trillion rubles, which is 21% lower than the volume of revenues in the first quarter of 2022, which is associated with a reduction in oil and gas revenues. The preliminary volume of federal budget expenditure in Q1 2023 amounted to 8.077 trillion rubles, or $99 billion, which exceeded the same period last year by 34%. Now, as we've discussed in other videos, Russia does have significant reserves. Prior to the invasion of Ukraine, Russia was holding around $150 billion in its national wealth fund. However, in 2022, the Russian economy recorded a deficit of $48 billion. And now in the first quarter of 2023, they've recorded an additional deficit of around $30 billion. So those two deficits combined equate to around $80 billion, which is more than half of the National Wealth Fund at the start of the war. So Russia is seriously depleting its reserves right now. And that's one of the reasons that the central bank no longer wants to support the Russian ruble in the international markets, because it's trying to reserve all of its cash to fund the losses that the economy is making. So the last thing that it wants to do is waste further money supporting the ruble when it doesn't really have the capacity to do that. And if Russia continues to experience deficits at the same rate that it's experienced over the course of the last 12 months, it's likely that by the end of 2023, the Russian economy will have run out of cash. Now, as you'll be aware, Russia does have around $300 billion worth of assets overseas, but those assets have been frozen. At the start of the war, those assets that were held in countries such as the USA, the UK and France were all frozen, and Russia does not have any access to those assets. So the losses that the Russian economy is experiencing right now are starting to cause the major problems. And that is one of the reasons why we've seen a significant deterioration in the value of the Russian ruble. These two charts show the value of the sale of Russian crude oil and Russian refined products over the course of the last 12 months. The graph at the top relates to crude oil. The graph at the bottom is refined oil products. And just to run through the color coding of this chart, the red section at the bottom relates to sales to China. The light blue section above it relates to sales to the European Union. The orange section relates to sales to India. The gray section relates to other countries. The green section towards the top relates to Turkey and then the dark section at the very top is unknown. And what these graphs show is that over the course of the last 12 months, there has been a significant reduction in the sale of oil products to the European Union and the West, and a significant increase in the value of sales to China and India. And this chart shows the biggest importers of Russian fossil fuels since the start of 2023. So you can see that the biggest single customer that Russia has is China, who've purchased around $15 billion worth of fossil fuels since the start of the year. The second largest purchaser, interestingly, is the European Union, who've purchased close to $10 billion worth of products. The third biggest purchaser is India, and the fourth biggest is Turkey. Now, one of the interesting developments over the course of the last 12 months is that Russia has been trying to move away from being linked to the US dollar and is now doing trades with countries like China and India, either in Russian rubles or in the home currency. So China is now doing a lot of business with Russia in Chinese yuan, and India is wanting to make its purchases in Indian rupees. So when you look at this data, you may be thinking, well, actually, is there any point looking at the value of the Russian ruble against the US dollar if other countries are no longer using the dollar? Because the reason that the dollar is so important globally is that a lot of deals are still struck in US dollars. So historically, when countries like India and China were doing deals with Russia, they would have had the benchmark currency set in US dollars. However, Russia is very, very keen to move away from that situation, to get away from the dollar being the benchmark currency for the world. It wants to establish the Russian ruble as the benchmark currency. So if you follow that logic through, the value of the Russian ruble to the US dollar becomes less important. And the exchange rate between the Russian ruble and the Chinese yuan and the Indian rupee is actually more critical. So let's have a look at what's been happening with the exchange rate with both of those currencies. This chart shows the movement in the value of the Chinese yuan against the Russian ruble over the course of the last six months. 
This time six months ago, one Chinese yuan was trading for around 8.5 Russian rubles. However, today one Chinese yuan is trading for around 11.9 Russian rubles. And that movement represents a fall in value in the Russian ruble of around 40%. So actually, the value of the ruble has fallen more in relative terms than it has against the US dollar. And if we expand the position to show the last five years, you can see that the movement in the value of the Russian ruble against the Chinese yuan is almost identical to what happened against the US dollar. Five years ago, one Chinese yuan was trading for around 9.9 .9 Russian rubles. It remained roughly at that level up until the point of the COVID-19 pandemic. When the exchange rate fell to around 12, we then saw a huge deterioration in the value of the Russian ruble following the invasion of Ukraine. We then saw the recovery, which was supported by the Russian central bank, which brought the exchange rate back down to around 8.5. However, over the course of the last 12 months, we have seen a significant deterioration in the value of the Russian ruble. This chart shows the movement in the exchange rate of the Indian rupee to the Russian ruble over the course of the last six months. And what this shows is that six months ago, one Russian ruble equated to 0.75 Indian rupees. However, the exchange rate today is one to one. So that means that the value of the Russian ruble against the Indian rupee has fallen by around 33% in the last six months. And if we expand the graph out to show the five year position, you can see that it's got exactly the same shape as the ruble against the Chinese yuan and the ruble against the US dollar. So what this graph confirms is that the value of the Russian ruble has been falling against all of the major currencies over the course of the last six months. The fall in the value of the Russian ruble doesn't have anything to do with doing less trade with the West and therefore there being less demand in terms of dollars. The reason that the value of the ruble is falling is more fundamental and is linked directly to what's happening in the Russian economy and to Russian oil prices. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because the strength of the Russian ruble is a topic that has been discussed over the course of the last 12 months. In the first few months of the military campaign in Ukraine, a lot of Russian supporters put forward the fact that the Russian ruble was trading very strongly against the US dollar as proof that the Russian economy was doing very well and that it was entirely unaffected by the sanctions. However, what we've seen from the analysis that we've looked at today is that that improved position was short-lived. And the reason that the Russian ruble strengthened in the period up until June was because the Russian central bank was supporting the currency and artificially increasing its price. Now, over the course of the last 10 months, we've seen a marked reduction in demand for Russian oil and gas products from the West. And as a result of that, we've seen the value of the ruble fall against the US dollar. And that deterioration in value is partly driven by the fall in demand for Russian fuel products and also by the poor performance of the Russian economy. Now, as we're all fully aware, Russia has pivoted away from selling a lot of its products to the West and is now trying to sell more oil and gas products into China and India. And what I wanted to do in this video was really dig down into what's happening with regards to those trading relationships and have a look at what's happened to the Russian ruble in comparison to the Chinese yuan and Indian rupee. Because if the ruble was strengthening against both of those currencies, then there would be an argument to say that Russia is moving away from its old trading relations, focusing on its new trading partners, and that the ruble is becoming more powerful as demand is increasing. However, what we've seen from the analysis that we've just looked at is that the value of the ruble has actually fallen compared with the Chinese yuan and the Indian rupee, and that the size of the fall is actually greater than the size of the fall against the US dollar. And there are a couple of reasons why that's happening. Firstly, the price of Russian oil and gas products is falling. Those products are trading at a discount compared with the international prices, partly because of the price caps that have been applied by the G7. And in addition to that, the Chinese and Indian counterparts who are dealing with Russia 
are wanting to settle in their own currency. So rather than paying for everything in Russian rubles, they're wanting to settle in Chinese yuan and Indian rupees. And of course, when they're doing those sort of deals, that means that there isn't the demand for Russian rubles because there's simply no need to convert the currency. So what we're actually seeing at the moment is that Russia is doing a lot more business with China and India, and that business is actually benefiting both China and India in terms of their currencies. Their currencies have strengthened significantly in the international markets, and that strengthening has been at the expense of the Russian ruble. So what does all of this mean for the Russian economy? Well, the devaluation of any currency is always bad news for an economy. Anything that you're having to buy in, which is priced in foreign currency, is going up in price by definition of the fact that your currency is now worth less in the international markets. So the 40% fall that the Russian ruble has seen against the Chinese yuan over the course of the last six months means that all of the products that it's importing from China are now 40% more expensive even if the actual base price is exactly the same as it was this time six months ago. So that's going to cause inflationary pressures in the Russian economy. Now, the official rate of inflation in Russia was declared to be 3.5% in March, which was a significant decline against the 11% seen in February. So that would indicate that the rise in prices in Russia has reduced significantly over the course of the last month or so. However, that doesn't really stack up when you look at what's been happening to the Russian ruble, you would have expected prices to have increased dramatically by around 30 or 40 percent. Now, as you'll be aware if you follow the channel, Russia has restricted the amount of information that it's releasing to the international markets. So we don't have the full detail behind this, but it does look questionable as to whether or not the 3.5 percent declared in March is realistic given the fact that the ruble has tanked in value. Now, as we discussed earlier in the video, the economy in Russia has fallen dramatically over the course of the last 12 months, and they've seen a huge deficit in quarter one of 2023. So when you look at the big picture and look at all of the information that we've got, it doesn't look like the Russian economy is doing well, and you would have expected inflation to be significantly higher than 3.5%. However, we can only deal with the statistics that we've got. So the overall summary of today's video is that over the course of the last six months, we've seen a significant deterioration in the value of the ruble, not just against the US dollar, but against its other key currencies, the Chinese yuan and the Indian rupee. And that will spell bad news for the Russian economy over the course of the next three to six months. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. And thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. And here's something to put a smile on your face.